So I've been thinking a lot about FOMO recently, this idea of like getting a bit obsessed with what other people are doing, being really conscious of how much time other people are spending out taking street photographs, getting a bit in your head. It's something I've really struggled with over the years, but being able to like focus on a project has really helped me. The photographs I've always been the most proud with have always ended up being ones I've taken a few steps from my front door. And I've ended up doing that for nearly a decade now. It originally started on my like commute to work. I would intentionally get up early and walk rather than taking public transport. And then it ended up being over lockdown and COVID, etc. I would find myself just going out for these long walks, exploring the local area around my little corner of Southwest London, which has a lot of planes going over because I'm in the flight path. Good times. This is not a great spot to film. I've got a train track there and the planes going over. So this video is a little update. I've released a new book called 10 Miles West, which is the, that decade of street photographs taken around my local area. I've also released some presets and I'm going to go out with a new camera along the Thames and take some photographs because that's what I've been doing for 10 years. So why stop now? <laughs> I've always thought it's really important for like anybody to shoot where they're from. I think it can be quite easy to dismiss the area you live in, think it's not particularly interesting, think there might not be anything interesting to see around there. But I think that's just because it's so familiar to you that you kind of like lost that novelty of it. But I think you can be really surprised how interesting where you live can be. And I live in a small, very suburban area of southwest London, just on the outskirts of Hounslow. Uh, I'm about a 20 minute walk from the River Thames. It takes me about an hour to get into central London on a good day. And I often go up into London to take street photos. And then I find myself taking photos on the way home, taking a bit of a detour along the river. And these pictures along the river have often ended up being the ones I'm most happy with. So yeah, it just seemed natural to actually try and make this into a bigger project. Whenever I like travel or go somewhere like entirely new or leave the country, I'm always like super conscious of like, I've got this finite amount of time. I've got to get something good. And I put this like unnecessary amount of pressure on myself and I always find myself a little bit disappointed with the photos when I come home. The thing I've loved about being able to like do this like really long term 10 year project in this area is there's just been like absolutely no pressure. I've done the same walk probably thousands of times and then it makes it all the more exciting and rewarding when a photograph does come together. Taking photos like this can be a bit tricky if there isn't a massive amount of footfall where you are. You may have to just kind of make do with like a small section of road or this bridge in particular is like the only place where I can actually get some decent footfall in the area. So I've taken a lot of photos and this spot in particular, this is stressing me out because I've left my camera on the other side of the road. Whoa. I think also as well with street photography in particular, it's quite a hard genre of photography to sort of maintain a project on. You find yourself going out into like the big city, walking for several hours, taking a load of street photos. There may be a sort of theme that develops in your work, but that can be kind of tricky to carve a project out of. And I think often photographers find that just like sticking to one location can be a good place to build a project around. And over the years, I've really been enjoying seeing other photographers like shoot their local surroundings and build these big projects like Nico Froelich in his series around Southeast London, uh, Dan Baker shooting around Cleethorpes and along the seafront, uh, Giselle Dupre along Coney Island and her like polar bear swimming club as well. It's such an important part of being a photographer to me, like discovering where you're from, building up these portraits of where you're from, what it means to you and building up these like projects that will hopefully be interesting to look at for years to come. So 10 Miles West is really my attempt at that kind of documentary uh, project photography. Also just wanted to shout out the cover by the incredible uh, Alex Mayhews, who is a local sign painter and artist. Her studio is in Brentford, which is an area that I've photographed a lot in the book. So to be able to work with her for the cover of this book has been incredible. And I mean, I'm happy with the photos, but I think the cover might actually be my favorite part of this book.
Um, rest of this video, I'm going to go out and take some photos along the river with my new-ish Fuji GFX 50S. In a recent video I talked about how I'm switching to Fujifilm and I've 100% switched to Fujifilm. I've got an X-Pro3 for shooting street in London, an X-T4 for filming videos, which pretty much all of this video has been shot with, and then also uh, GFX for doing this more intentional kind of like documentary photos. So yeah, let's head out with the GFX, take a few photos along the river so you can get more of a sense of this area as well. Consistency is also something I think about a lot. I think that's also a benefit of staying local. Often specific areas or towns or just places in general will have a very specific like color palette and look. Like around where I live in particular, it's quite green. There's quite a lot of blues and reds. I think you can find an interesting photograph absolutely anywhere. It's just about putting the time in and almost like training yourself. Like I think street photography is almost like training for me for this kind of more slower photography. Like the gamble of time is much bigger. When you take these kinds of photographs, you are investing a lot of time. There's been times where I walked 10 miles and come back with just no photos at all around here. So like it's definitely been a, a longer game, but I think the reward is greater, if that makes sense. What am I talking about? I don't know. There's also an element of like making the best of what you've got. Like I live 10 minutes from Heathrow, like the UK's busiest airport. Planes go over my house every five minutes or less, I think. You probably hear them in the background of all of this audio and pretty much every video I've made. So I've been kind of like leaning into that. It's quite fun to like use planes as a visual, I don't know, just a visual element of photographs. It's quite unusual to see them so big in the sky if you don't live near a big city or you don't live near an airport. So I've just been like leaning into the planes. Why not? They're something about this area that is like a semi-unique element of where I live. So yeah, I think it's important to think about what makes a certain area unique when you are embarking on a big project like this. I really like the process of using this camera. It's very slow and clunky and intentional. Very different to the X-Pro3, which is like instantaneous. I've also been really enjoying using the X-T4 for video. The colors I'm able to get out of it are super nice. So I'm kind of leaning into this Fujifilm trifecta at the moment, seeing if I can stick with one camera brand for longer than a couple of months, managing it so far. That's the bid, I reckon. Uh, keen to know what you guys think down below about like local projects. What are you working on? Do you think travel photography is kind of overrated? Do you think it's important to try and like carve out a local project in this way? Let me know what you reckon. If you're into photo books, please do check out 10 Miles West. I'll probably make a more in-depth video about it at some point. Big thanks for watching along and I love you very much.